In our last example, we look at a uh, problem in geometry. So here we've got the height of a certain cylinder is always twice its radius. So we're looking at a cylinder. And we have, the, so it's a circular cylinder. And we have that if the base radius or the radius of the circular cross section is r, then the height is twice the radius. And here we're going to show something that may be quite surprising. So we're going to show that the rate of change of the volume with respect to r is equal to the surface area. So here we're looking at an example where we've got volume and surface area and we're going to see that they're related through the derivative. Okay, so not really an obvious sort of thing one would do with a derivative but again we're in a section where we're looking at how derivatives crop up in different areas of science and here's an application of the derivative right within our own area of mathematics in particular geometry. So what are we going to do? Well we want to show that the rate of change in the volume is equal to the surface area. So let's do a couple of things first. Let's work out what the volume is. So this is a circular cylinder. So the volume which we'll denote by V, is equal to the area of the cross-section times the height. And the area, that's a circle down there, so that's pi r squared, and the height is 2r, so our volume is 2 pi r cubed. So there's our volume. What we're going to do now is we're going to think of Volume is a function of r and work out its derivative. So dv dr is equal to 6 pi r squared. Okay, so there is our rate of change of the volume with respect to the radius. Now let's look at surface area. So what is the surface area of this thing? Well, to get surface area, what we can do is we can remove the top and remove the bottom. So those are just circles. We can work out the areas of those individually. And then for this lateral section, we'll take a cut right vertically downwards and then unravel it. Kind of like we're unraveling the label off a tin can and forming a rectangle out of it. So we can find the surface area of that lateral section by unfolding it into a rectangle. Now what's the height of the rectangle? That's still 2r. What's the length of this rectangle, well that would have been in the circumference of the top here, or the bottom. It's the circumference of the circle, because once we unravel it, that circumference of the circle then unravels to give us the top. So what is the circumference? Well, that would be 2 pi r. So that's that distance there. Now in order to find the area then of this rectangle, well we take the product of the two. So that's 4 pi r squared. What's the area of our circular top and bottom. Well, each of those are circles of radius r, so the area of that would be pi r squared, and the area of this one is pi r squared. So our surface area of our cylinder is equal to the area of the top plus the area, area of the lateral section plus the area of the bottom, which is our 6 pi r squared and that's our surface area and what we notice is that these are equal. That may seem like a surprising fact that the rate of change in the volume is the surface area. Uh, now I'll leave it for you to explore a couple of the examples in the textbook a little more carefully and they'll show in some cases, in particularly the case of the circle and the sphere, why there ought to be this connection for some geometric figures. All right, that's it for this example, and that's it for this section. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you again next time.